Hello, it is Cairo, and this is a beaver's call. So, I've sent a couple of these out in mystery boxes, and I never got the chance to really talk about them, and I've always wanted to because they're really interesting. Um, beavers are just kind of common North American animals, and you never really realize how cool they are until you look really closely at them. So, first off, um, I actually got my first beaver skull in November of last year, and when I opened the box, like, I was floored at how large it was. Because I'd, like, grown up watching animal documentaries where, you know, you have footage of animals shot from afar. You have, like, the, you know, the neutral of Omaha's, the, like, busy beaver family, and, you know, it's shot from, like, a hundred yards away or something, and you see them building the dam and stuff. And, like, when you grow up watching animal documentaries, you don't have a real good sense of how large animals are. So, whenever I go to a museum, or whenever I go to, like, a zoo or something, um, well, maybe not a zoo, because in zoos you're seeing animals from afar, too. But, but when, whenever I go to the museum and I see taxidermy, I'm, like, always really surprised at the size of the animals. Because, uh, for some animals, I expect them to be real large, and then... And vice versa, some of the animals are a lot smaller than I expect. So when I kind of expected beavers, I, I had this conception that they were cat-sized or they were, you know, smaller animals. But they're not. They're really large. You see, this one is not even that big. But here, here is a pretty large beaver. Or actually, he's not really a large beaver. He's just kind of an average beaver, right? And this, uh, give me one sec. And this is a house cat. And... I, they're on the same plane, so there's no parallax or anything. This is this house. This is actually a um, you know, a tomcat. He's in the ten to twelve pound range. He's a pretty big cat, and this is a beaver. They're huge animals, and it was kind of something that you know I never really sort of expected. But but yeah. Um, so anyway, uh, there's a lot of cool stuff about um, beavers that um, let me just change out the skull. That one, this one has better teeth, so it's easier to demonstrate. So there's a lot of really cool stuff about them that, you know, wanted to get a chance to talk about. First of all, when you ever see beaver skulls in collections or in somebody's, on somebody's mantle or in a museum, they're always set like that. And it's as if that's the way it is, but it's not true. Uh, the carrying angle, the actual real life carrying angle of the skull is more like this. So it's more accurate to actually display them like this and balance them on the um on the jaw here because in real life they would have a like a, a like a head carrying angle of like this so anyway something kind of neat that you'll notice is that you'll notice the the teeth have this layer of orange on them they have naturally orange teeth and when i was little like my parents would be like hey if you didn't brush your teeth uh, the, the, the plaque would just permanently bond to your teeth and your, your teeth would be, you know, like, like orange, like beaver teeth. You see beavers? It's because they never brush. And I was like, you know, when you're seven, you're just like, oh God, must brush, must brush every day. But then like, it, but you never take the time to think like, hey, wolves don't brush, lions don't brush, wild animals don't brush, but they still have normal colored teeth. Uh, but you know, it's, why is that? But actually, um... The truth is a lot more interesting than this. So what the orange is, is it's, it's actually a layer of iron. So they have a layer of iron particles in, um, in the enamel of the teeth. It, and it's arranged in this pattern, and it's orange because it oxidizes. So the teeth actually literally rust. Uh, they're kind of like, um, have you seen like Moonraker, that Bond villain that has the metal caps to his teeth? Or the metal teeth? I, I never understood how that worked. Oh, God. But... Um, Sorry about the kids in the background. Those are the neighbor's kids. But, um, it, but yeah, so they have this iron layer to the, to the outside of the teeth. And, it, and it's natural, and they just um, produ naturally produce the iron. And the inside of the teeth is white. Um, and it's just normal enamel. So what does this do? Well, the iron-infused enamel on the outside is much harder than the white, uh, the non-iron-infused enamel, the non-fortified enamel on the inside, right? So when they're chewing, um, the the outside harder layer always wears down slower than the inside layer, which means that if the inside layer wears down faster, you see this slope right here? Here, let me get a pointing device. The sewing needle. There you go. 
like this this uh the sloping edge right here right so when so when they're chewing they uh, this sloping edge develops naturally only because the outside edge is harder so meaning that this is like a self-sharpening mechanism so given the same given that they're chewing the same material, the outside harder layer wears down slower than the inside. So the teeth always have this cusp on the outside. They always have this sharp edge. And that's how they keep their teeth sharp. Well, there's something else too. Um, they actually have really specialized teeth just all throughout. In addition to the incisors right here, if you open this up and you look at the molars, they have this really interesting, like, waviness to the molars, right? And there's a reason for that as well. If you look carefully at the molar, you'll see that the the white edges um, are, surround the sort of inner, like, more yellowish material. You see that? So so the folds on the outside are white, and then the the inside is yellowish. And that's not that's not just dirt. That it's there's a reason for that. So. Teeth are made of enamel and dentin. Enamel is the harder material and dentin is the softer material. And like in people, uh, the enamel totally covers the dentin and surrounds it. So if, if you go to the dentist and you have a cavity that's in the, that's in the enamel, it's uh, a lot easier to fix. But if you have a cavity that's gone down to the dentin, because dentin's softer, um, you have less time to get it fixed because now it's going to start... Uh, decaying a lot faster, but just because it's not as resistant. Anyway, um, enamel is white. Dentin is yellowish. And this is why kind of our, well, actually there's a caveat. Uh, enamel is not completely white. It's like a semi-transparent. And this is why our own teeth have a naturally sort of yellowish tinge to it, because you're seeing the dentin through the semi-transparent enamel. But anyway, um, so these white folds on the outside are enamel, and the inside is dentin. The enamel right here is much harder than the dentin. Uh, this means that when the enamel is chewing, the dentin will wear down faster than the enamel. And it, this actually forms depressions in the teeth between the ridges. This is like if you go um, to like one of those old castles or something, and you look at the sidewalk, there's the the harder pebbles that are embedded, or like cobblestone streets, actually, that's a great, better example. If you look at any cobblestone street, the, the cobblestones will be raised and then the, the cement between them will be depressed in because the cement is softer and wears down faster than the stone, right? Even though they're being stepped on at the same rate. So this is the same principle where uh, the dentin actually wears down a lot faster um, than the enamel, even though they're being worn at the same rate. And what this does is that the enamel is always harder than the dentin, and it creates, it creates the cusp. So the, the teeth will never, there will be, never be a situation where the teeth are totally smooth. Um, given normal wear, the situation is always that the, the enamel is going to be raised above the dentin, giving it like a, like a, like a series of ridges that make it easier to grind with. So yeah, this too, is a self-sharpening mechanism. So, yeah, I just find that really interesting because, you know, there's basically, they have, you know, they only have molars and incisors, but but all the teeth they have have this really unique self-sharpening mechanism, and it's based on the materials that you sort of make up the t teeth and how they've worked with the materials to, like, maximize the, the material properties. So, yeah, that the beaver skull this guy is actually kind of interesting because he at some point in his life he broke off his zygomatic arch i don't know what happened these guys have very robust skulls it's possible he was hit by a car or some other they had some other issue or something but he survived it and then it grew back together like you know, like yay so and then and then he and then he died years later after this injury but yeah anyway um that is the beaver skull